Okay. All the following is proven as life extending or being very healthy. One, doing sports or physical exercise. Two, sex. Three, eating many times a day. Four, sleeping at least six hours a night. <laughs> Buddhism considers all these ideas bad. How do you explain this? Very good question, no? Hmm. It's a tough one. Okay. Well, let's let's start by countering some of these claims. Um, okay. Sports and physical exercise. A lot of the reason why it's considered to be healthy is because e people eat many times a day, for example, uh, and eat. Well, let's just say eat too much. Let's start there. Hmm? Um, Also, because their bodies operate, tend to operate suboptimally. Hmm? And so um, that's going to lead to the, 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 the because of the mind. You know, the mind will cause tension in the body, um, will cause um, o overworking of the systems in the body due to hormone releases, you know, based on sex, for example, uh, but just any kind of desire or, or anger or frustration. You know. This is going to um, disrupt the bodily systems or overtax them, and so it, it actually can, you know, uh, lead to buildup of toxins, that kind of thing. Um... And so, hence, you need. There's the need to, to exercise, hmm. do sports, and and do exercise. This helps people. But see, all of these studies for all of these things are dealing most likely with people who don't meditate, or you know maybe do a little bit of meditation, but not seriously. You know, you're you're dealing with ordinary people who consider sports to be their meditation. So it's helpful for them. It's a way of relaxing. Well, good for them. If you practice meditation, especially walking meditation, it's you'd have to do a study of those people and to see whether sports, you know, whether they were actually lacking something. And I think you'd find that no, indeed, they're not. I mean, ridiculous, because consider all these, consider... Um, you know the 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 sort of the stereotypical Asian person living on the mountain, who lives to be ninety or a hundred, who never does any sports. Uh, I I guess in some cases they're doing a lot of physical activity, but in many cases not. In many cases, it's just peaceful living. You know, peaceful living changes so much. That's one thing. So so anyway, talking about sports and physical exercise, I think you can challenge that based on a meditative lifestyle that there's really no reason to to require your muscles to be bigger or your cardiovascular system to be extra to be worked out uh, if your mind is um, is in tune with the body because you, know, so you will find through meditation that your body functions far more efficiently through meditation, you can feel in the meditation practice that a lot of toxins are being um, flushed out. Okay, uh, sex. Sex, uh, well, besides the fact that it's a physical activity, um, I don't know what to say here because you're, you're, you know, you study the addiction centers in the brain. You know, what you're talking about I guess is the release of endorphins, um, whatever, you know, there's a lot of dopamine, I'm sure, uh, oxytocin, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot, yeah, which one, dopamine is desire and oxytocin is pleasure, I don't know, I'm sure it's all caught up in there, but you have a serious problem with all of this, whatever benefit I don't know that there's any physical benefit to to the excretion of dopamine or the you know the, the production of dopamine oxytocin, whatever these chemicals are. The I don't. I mean, I'm not a chemist or a biologist, but I do know, just from listening and of course from practice, that um, you've got a serious problem here because you're cultivating addiction. 
these systems seriously affect the brain in a bad way. You know, they cultivate what we call the addiction cycle. It's studied, you know. The, um, sex leads you to desire more sex and actually makes you less uh, satisfied, you know, more impatient. Um, the, the, this is not theoretical. You can study how this addiction cycle works. It leads to addiction. There's no question. What I think is probably not well researched is what addiction does to you. Um, and, and or we don't realize it's like okay, so I get addicted to sex. It's fine, you know. I'm happy to have an active sex life. But what does the question is? That's not the question. The question is what does this addiction cycle do to you? Does it have any negative effects? And I think absolutely it does. It leads to the potential for greater anger and frustration, depression, uh, boredom, and and uh, dissatisfaction, inability to. Well, I mean, these are all saying the same thing, but basically the inability to stay at peace with yourself. So, the idea that sex is... Uh, what are you saying about these things? Life extending or being very healthy. Okay, well, let's get back to the life extending thing. Um... Yeah, okay, no, let's not. Let, we have to include it there because life extending is, even from a Buddhist point of view, that's a good thing, good to live longer. At the expense of your... Well, as again, I, I would say the, the benefits are purely based on the fact that the person has too much stress in their lives and this is their only outlet. So absolutely a person who is suppressing their sexual urges and, and um, you know, sitting around as a couch potato all the time, uh, this is unhealthy. And so that release is, is the only way to physically cope with that. You know, it's just a bouncing back and forth. But I would say definitely a person who is able to overcome those things is, is, is better off. I would I would argue will actually have the potential to live longer, but moreover, avoids the huge, huge problem of addiction. Sports and and exercise is the same. I mean, sports can be quite addictive. Uh, we have, and if you don't believe, you don't. If you think that's absurd, people who come and meditate can prove it. Anyone, any sports person who comes to meditate has a very difficult time sitting still. They're not able to because. The, they have an addiction. And that's going to spill over in your life. It's going to make you jumpy. It's going to make you, um, you know, somehow require something. Which means that when you're in a position to not be able to indulge in your addiction, you're going to be frustrated. You know, as you get older, if you ever end up being bedridden, it's going to be frustrating. It's going to make you depressed and so on. Definitely, this happens. Sports, people who suffer injuries in sports, they become depressed and frustrated and turn to alcohol in extreme cases, but um, it's a problem. So, which gets to sort of the other, other part of this answer is that Buddhism doesn't, isn't so concerned with the body. Living long, good thing. Living long with, by cultivating addiction, bad thing. You know, if if as you, if 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 living a hundred years means you can cultivate more addiction, then better to die early. You know, I mean, it's a horrible thing to say, but you're not doing anything good by living. Um, so, better as the Buddha said, yo yo chawasa satang jive apasang utayapayang e kahang jivitang se yo pasang utayapayang pasan that's uh, not quite the correct grammar. Um, it, better to live. Better it is to live one day, better than to live a hundred years, not seeing the truth, um, not seeing arising and ceasing, not seeing the nature of things. Uh, better to live one day, having seen this truth. So that's the the so the second more probably the more deep part of this answer. But I don't think these claims should be 
uh, gone unchallenged, should be left unchallenged. So number two, number three, eating many times a day. I've heard this, and I've had doctors tell me. <laughs> even a Thai, a Thai doctor told me he said, eh, "I don't want to say bad things about monks." And then he basically went on to say how bad it is that monks only eat in the morning. Um, again, I want to say that it has to do with people's um, their you know, lifestyles, but I guess I'd have to look deeper into the science of it. I want to say that eating once a day is great, you know, it, it feels regular. Eating once a day, just one meal for example. Um, my guess, you know, my, my hypothesis is that you know, the, the, the digestive cycle works on a 24-hour, something like a 24-hour cycle anyway. You fully digest food. Maybe that's a myth, but as I understood it was a 24-hour thing, so you get into a very regular cycle and your your bowel movements are regular. Everything seems, you know, quite uh, you know, efficient, eating only one meal a day. But again, the, the much bigger problem is, can you imagine eating s ten meals a day, for example? I don't know how many meals they, they say is good, but at least four or six, maybe, you know, eating throughout the day. Great, so it's good for your body. What are you, a cow? <laughs> I mean... I mean, what what is this how you want to live your life live to eat you know that you know problem problem is addiction you know if you eat many times a day who cares how good it is it, it's sort of this you know this stereotypical uh, you know the the cynic who looks at the health nut a person who obsesses over their food and is all into you know everything has this 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 and i mean i'm pretty particular personally I, knowing not to use trans fatty acids and not to, you know, trying to stay away from fried foods, um, you know, red meat, you know, meat in general, you know, tr trying to stay away from too much sugar, etc., etc. Chemicals, you know, not wanting to eat stuff if it's pumped full of chemicals. So this, these, I think, I mean, it feels kind of like a healthy, you know, sort of discrimination. But people can go extreme and they live their lives, you know, about their food, obsessing over their food, and you see some of these people, and they have the, their raw grains and nuts, and it's, it's just it's heaven for them. You know, and this is an obsession. It feels good, but it's an addiction. Um, it doesn't. It's not necessarily that, but simply eating many times a day is encouraging your addiction. So again, we're much more concerned with the mind. You're going to die, but if you die full of lust and greed for food you might be born, reborn as a cow or a pig pig you know? look at how pigs eat they'll eat anything because they're so caught up in food getting caught up in food very dangerous mentally spiritually hmm? okay number four sleeping at least at six hours a night now that's the easiest obviously that has much to do with the state of mind a person who is highly stressed out probably needs about eight hours of sleep you know maybe even more um, person who isn't stressed out. I've got a meditator downstairs who I told to sleep four hours a night. You know, We have meditators who don't sleep, who practice all day and all night. There was a monk, there's monks do this for months. You know, There's a story, the first verse of the Dhammapada, uh, the background story is about a monk who did this for three months. And uh, apropos, he he became blind as a result of his practice. He destroyed his, his, his eyes, so he really hurt his body. But at the same time, he became an arahat. So they, he called, they called him Jakupala. Jaku means eye, Bala is guardian. He's one who, gu who guarded his eyes. It's a, it's a play on words because there's two kinds of, of eyes, the, the, the eye of Dhamma and the, uh, the physical eye. So he protected the important vision you know, he, he gained the vision that was most important and became blind physically. He, 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 he had dispelled his spiritual blindness at the same moment where, when he as uh, losing his physical vision. So, um, again, two, two parts to the answer. One, it's certainly, you know, these kinds of studies ha are dealing with ordinary people who aren't doing intensive meditation. 
um, but also not such a big deal to neglect the body in favor of the mind to some extent. And of course, you rely on the body, it's no good dying, um, but certainly better to die mindful than to live corrupt. So thank you, good question, but uh, we'll have, uh, maybe it's a bit of a disagreement. So anyway.